you know, he picked the wrong family and uh, not scared of a conflict and we're not scared, we're not running, we're coming at him. friends i hope everyone's doing well i'm frankie and this is the think tank so i am going to talk about nicola boulet and her family's statement they the word that everyone's using has been appalled and this is fair enough because what has been going on in that area, as far as um, policing, I think has been lacking. But that's just my own personal opinion, of course. So family of missing UK mom, Nicola Bully, issued a statement after appalling discovery three weeks after her disappearance. Let's take a week. Nicola Bully dropped her children off at school at about 8.40 on Friday the 27th of January. That was normal. And she then proceeded after chatting to a couple of people in the school uh, yard, walked uh, up Garthang Road and onto the river path uh, over Nine Bridge that takes you down to these fields. We know that because there are witnesses who have identified her, also from her phone data. So the information that has been put out here, you're going to find equally as appalling. We know that Nicola entered the field and um, made a couple of um, messages on her mobile phone, one to her boss and one to a friend making arrangements uh, for a play date for her children. And at 9.01, we know she logged into a work call on Teams. So at approximately 9.10, a witness that knows her um, had the last sighting and that was at the upper field. And when I say an approximate time, it is that, but we are basing that on obviously the times that we can say that witness left the field. So I'm quite confident. So there has been quite a few blunders as far as uh, law enforcement goes. And I do not blame this family for having questions. But then it is around that time. Then know from um, digital data that at some time around 9.20, we believe that Nicholas handset had moved to towards the bench area. We then know at about 9.33, a local dog walker who is walking a dog comes across the bench and finds Willow um, untied, running between the bench and the gate. The mobile phone is on the bench, face upwards, still logged into the team's call, and Willow's harness is halfway between the bench and the riverside. That witness makes a number um, before returning home. She, make, she then returns and makes a number of phone calls to people because at that point she doesn't know who the dog belongs to or who the phone belongs to and doesn't know how to get in touch with people. She makes a number of inquiries with a local vet who uh, can't assist her and following um, a number of inquiries, uh, eventually people return to the bench, recover the handset and Willow, and we find out 
that obviously they belong to Nicola. The alarm is then raised with the local school, who then in turn contact Paul, Nicola's partner. So there's also a possibility that Paul was there before they received or he received this call. Who then makes to the scene. So yeah. So what it's saying here is a day after UK's Len Lancastershire Police gave an in-depth update on their investigation into the disappearance of Nicola Boulay, the family has released a statement. They are urging the public to stay focused on the missing mom rather than revelations from the police over her significant struggles with alcohol and menopause. A family hinted that the police force forced to make these details public earlier in the day, declining to provide details on why, why Boulay was considered high risk. Although we know that Nikki would not have wanted this, there are people out there threatening to sell stories about her. They said in a statement issued via Lancashire police. Can you imagine? This is appalling, as they're saying. And the family said they need to believe and believe the public's focus had become distracted from finding Nikki and more uh, speculation and rumors about her private life. On Wednesday, police said they were sharing more details than they usually would about Boulay's life to try and dispel <laughs> misinterpretation of further, further speculation of the taste my case my tongue is tied. <laughs> they revealed that Boulay had in past suffered from significant issues with alcohol, which were brought on by her ongoing struggles with menopause and that these struggles had resurfaced over recent months. So I don't know what you guys think, but really does some of this information help find Nicola? Nikki is in the perimonopause stage with significant side effects, such as brain fog, restless sleep, and taking HRT, I'm not sure what that is, to help and was giving her intense headaches. The headaches caused Nikki to stop taking the HRT, thinking it may have helped her, but only in the end causing more of a crisis. You know, you do really have to be careful when taking medications some of these medications out there, they're destructive. So the public's focus has to be on finding her and not making up wild theories about her personal life. So on Friday, it was three weeks since she basically vanished into thin air. January 27th, she was walking her dog near the river wire and called in to a team basically um, uh, 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 a group call. Initially, police believe the mom of two had fallen into the river, but there have been many, many searches by police and divers have not come up with, with her remains. And the statement seems to indicate that they believe she still might be alive and had disappeared intentionally, which was one of the early, early theories police were investigating. So I don't know. I put a lot of thought into this and there's a lot of reasons why it falls through the sniff test in my mind. So they've been pleading for her to get in touch. Her family said, Nikki, we hope you are reading this and know that we love you so much and your girls want a cuddle and that they all need her home. So they did say that they can be, you know, reached out to. They would appreciate if she is out there for a call just so that they know that she is safe. So around 826, it says, 
Nicola leaves home with her children. At 8.40 a.m., she drops her children off at school, and this is in block one here, and has a brief conversation with another parent. At 8.43 a.m., Nicola walks along the path by the river wire towards the gate slash bench that goes into the lower field, which is here. So at approximately 8.47, a dog walker who actually knows Nicola, seen her walking her dog in the lower field. On 8.53 to 9.01, Nicola sends an email to her boss and a message, uh, messages to a friend before logging on to that team call or group call. At 9.10, so this is in here, um, approximately 9.10, a witness who knows Nicholas sees her on the upper field with the dog. At 8, sorry, at 9.20, her phone is back at the bench. At 9.30, the team call ends, but Nicola stays logged in. 9.33, Another dog walker finds her phone at the bench. So that is not leaving a lot of time now, is it? Thousands of people have contacted the police with information allegedly about the disappearance, leading the Lancashire, Lancashire police to investigate an unpresented numbers of inquiries. Detective Superintendent Smith said the force has been inundated with false information and accusation and rumor across the past two weeks. She said that in her 29 years of police service, she has not seen anything like this and describes persistent myths about this case. So we do know that, there we go. We do know that she did make it to, let's see here, back to that park bench. There is a few people wondering if she didn't unalive herself by going off that fairly steep embankment and into the water intentionally. So it actually, that, that creek or river is wider than it actually looks in a lot of pictures. It surprised me when I started kind of putting it together. And they are saying there's a fair amount of depth there. But with that said, there's been divers, scanners, boats, you name it, going back and forth up that river and there has been literally no sight of Nicola or of any of her possessions. So I guess what we're looking at is, um, I guess what we're looking at is, hmm, is it a possible abduction? Do you think she could have just walked away? I don't know, I'd love to know your thoughts because this is pretty baffling, I must say. I'm going to keep watching this case because it is very intriguing. Where did she go? Why was her dog left? Why did she make these appointments? Why did she talk to co-workers if she was planning on intentionally leaving? So let me know what your thoughts are down below. And as I said, I am going to continue keeping an eye on this case and the other ones I'm following, and I'll keep you posted with updates. So for now, friends, thank you again for spending this time with me. I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.